In this lesson, we're gonna talk about sigma notation. Now, some students find sigma notation very intimidating, but I'm gonna do my best to make it super easy for you to understand. So here's our first example. Let me try to show you exactly what this all means. So what you're gonna do is you are gonna go find term number one, okay? To find term number one, you're gonna plug whatever this number is. In this case, that is a one, okay? It's not always gonna be a one, as I'll show you in some of the future examples, where it might even be a two. Okay, so we're gonna go find term number one by just plugging the, a one into there, because that's a one, so we're gonna go three times one plus two, and that's five. Then to find term number two, you add, you, you increase this number by one, so now we're gonna plug in a two. And that's gonna be eight. Then you're gonna go find term number three by plugging in the next number, which would be a three. So three times three plus two, which is 11. Now you keep going until this number reaches this number. Okay, so that's gonna be up to five. So three times four, add two, which is 14. And then three times five, add two, which is 17. Then what does this funny thing actually mean? It means plus everything together or sum. So we're just gonna go add all of these numbers together and let's do it, five plus eight plus 11 plus 14 plus 17, and there's our answer, 55. Wait, Kevin, you're telling me that that's what sigma notation is? Yes, of course there's gonna be a few extra little twists and some interesting things, but I'm gonna show you all of those little interesting things in this video. So let's just keep going and you'll see how it all works, but that's the basics. So here's the next example. So a lot of learners, they think, oh, okay, so because this is a two, then I'm gonna find term number two. No, you're gonna start with term number one and you plug whatever this number is. So it's gonna be minus four times two, take away three, which is negative 11. Then to find term number two, you're just gonna add one to this number. So now we're gonna be using a three. And that's gonna be negative 15. Then to find term number three, you add another one to this P that's gonna be negative 19, and you keep going until this number reaches that number. So there we used P as two, here we used P as three, here we used P as four, and so we need to find one more, which would be where P is five, and that's gonna be negative 23. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and remember that this symbol over here means plus, so we're gonna add all of these numbers together. Okay, let's go do that. And so that's gonna be negative 68. Here's another one. So maybe at this point, you are ready to do this by yourself. So we start off by finding term number one. To find term one, you just start with whatever this number is. So that's gonna be two to the power of three plus one, which is the same as two to the four, which is 16. To find term number two, you just add one to this number. So now we're gonna be plugging in a four for P, and that's gonna be 32. To find term number three, we're gonna use a five for P. And you keep going until P reaches seven. Kevin, bro, this is so easy. My teacher made it so complicated. I know, I've heard this before, guys. But it does get a little bit more tricky. We're gonna show you that in this video, though. Um, so just stick around. Um, it, it gets more interesting. For example, 200, my bro. We are not gonna sit and do this 200 times. Okay, so surely there's a different way that I need to show you when we get to this next example. Okay, but for this one, because this number and this number are fairly close, we can do it easily, right? It doesn't take too long. But if we start getting from one to 200, nah, then there's gotta be better ways, hey? Okay, so let's go A4. So that's gonna be a P or six now. So that's two to the seven, which is 128. And then we can find term five, which is where P is seven, and that's where we'll stop, because that's the upper limit, and that's gonna be two to the eight, which would be 256. Now, you need to go and use the symbol, which actually just means plus. So we're gonna go plus all these numbers together, 496, that's the answer. So now we're gonna get to the more interesting ones, where, I mean, if you wanted to, look, if you're a person that you have a lot of time, on the weekends, you just don't wanna do anything but mathematics, then by all means, you can sit for three hours and you can do this 200 times. It will give you the correct answer. 
But for those of you that just want to get done with this stuff so you can go out and do things with your friends or maybe you have a test tomorrow, then I wouldn't advise doing it 200 times. Yeah, it's just, it's going to take quite a while. Okay, so let me show you how to do it. All you do is you're going to go find, here's my little tip, find the first, well not my tip, I mean all teachers would say this, find the first three terms. Okay, so let's go find term one, term two, and term three. So how do we find term one again? You start with whatever this number is. In this case, it's a one. It's not always a one, like we've seen before. So go plug that in, and that is negative two. Go find term two now. So that would be six minus five, which is one. Go find term three, which is then four. Stop there, because what we can do now, here's the cool part. We can write those numbers next to each other. Well, let's just do it like that. And what we realize is that this is plusing three, plusing three. So this is an arithmetic series. Well, technically you might call it a sequence because of that, but we know that we're gonna be plusing all of these numbers together um, eventually, because that's what this tells us. So instead of doing this 200 times, why don't we just go use the sum of an arithmetic series formula? You remember this one? Ha-ha, amazing, right? So we need to know how many terms there are. Now many students, they're just gonna say, oh, there's 200. Now that is correct. But if this number at the bottom was a two, then you can't say that there's 200 terms, okay? So because we're counting from one to 200, that means there's 200 terms. But if you are counting from, let's say two, up to 200, then there's only 199 terms. So please don't get into the bad habit of thinking that this number is n. That's not true, okay? So the way that you can work out the number of terms is the following. Take the top number minus the bottom number and then always remember to plus one. So in this example, it'll be 200 minus the bottom number, which is a one, and then plus one, which is 200. So in this example, there are gonna be 200 terms, but that's only because this number is a one. If this number was anything else, then your, your n value wouldn't be 200. So please, I see a lot of learners getting caught out with that. Okay, but luckily, the next example, I'll show you, um, you'll see that, that, that how that all works. Okay, so you, we know that there's 200 terms, a1 is term number one, which is negative two. Ah, we don't know what the last term is, but that's okay because we can work that out by just finding the 200th term. And so we can just go say three times 200, take away five, which is 595. And so we can say plus 595. And now we can just go calculate. And that's gonna be 59,300. And so if you had to go do this 200 times and you had to then go add all of the numbers together, you would get 59,300. So if you're bored right now, go have fun with that and you should get to the same answer. So here's our next example. Now, if you had to go from four to 20, I guess you could do that manually but there's gonna be a foster way. Um, in the earlier examples, you know, if you're counting from three to seven, or if you're counting from two to five, or if you're counting from one to five, it's better to just do it manually, it's foster. But if you're counting from like four up until 20, I wouldn't go do it manually. All I would do is just go find the first three terms. You always wanna find the first three. Now, how do you do that? You start with whatever this number is. That'll be two to the four, which is 16. Then it'll be two to the five, because you're adding one, so that's 32, and then two to the six, which would be 64. Okay, so let's look at these numbers, and let's see if we can identify any pattern. Ah, it's geometric. See how we're multiplying by two? So then we can use the geometric sum formula, which is the one I've showed you before, which goes like this. Okay, now A1 is 16, R, is the, the number that you're multiplying with, which would be two, because you're multiplying by two. Now n, we need to quickly work that out. So please don't say that n is 20, 
it's not 20. Remember, we're counting from 4 up to 20. So use the formula that I told you, top minus bottom plus 1. And so that's going to be 20 take away 4, add 1, which is 17. So there are 17 terms in the sequence. So we can say 16 and then 1 minus 2 to the power of 17 over 1 minus 2. And so that's going to be 2097136 as our final answer.